Well, we have some a little lighter side. We're switching up the gears. Coming up next, uh, Mr. Tony Paul, saxophonist, and uh, talking a bit about some jazz. Up next. <laughs> Taking in a little bit of jazz there with saxophonist Anthony Woodruff, also known as Tony Paul. His name is synonymous with jazz locally, and that is his take on the Grover Washington classic, Just the Two of Us. And come May 7th, you will get a little more taste of that with the jazz artists on the greens as they host an event that bears tribute to some of the greatest musicians in history, the Grandmaster himself, Lord Kishner, and percussionist extraordinaire, Ralph McDonald. So I'm joined with Tony at this time. Good morning, Mr. Hi. Paul. To Mr. Woodruff. Good Tony morning, Paul Kelly. is your stage name. <laughs> I got you up early this yeah. morning. Yes, 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 yes. So Thank Nigel you for having is supposed me. to join us, but he's having a bit of some issues, so he may come in a little bit later Technical. on. And um, okay. so happy to, to see you and hear you. Uh, tell me a bit about Same this. Here particular production it's a prelude to the 2023 event we would have looked forward to having going back on the greens ideally but covid would have had it in the last two years yeah. no productions tell me a bit about this so, movie art series well it's it's something that production one have come up with because obviously because of covid they haven't been able to do the large show with a lot of people gathering together 
So the idea to do something a little bit smaller as restrictions started to open up um, came along. And it's 100 years since Kitchener's birth. So that's one of the reasons why we're looking at Kitchener. Um, but also, Ralph McDonald, a lot of people may not know the name, but they definitely know the music because Ralph McDonald is responsible for songs like Just the Two of Us. As much as Bill Withers is the one who sang it, um, Ralph is one of the writing team. Um, he also worked with Roberta Flack. So songs like Where Is The Love? And you know, he also wrote um, another Grover Washington classic, Mr. Magic. So Ralph is like ingrained in a lot of the soul and early jazz that kind of i guess flitted with with pop music um so it's he's a really great artist to work work with his music and when you when you think of their contributions to what we consider to be jazz in Trinidad and tobago and in the region in general it's they are part and parcel of of, of the music that you hear so a lot of great classics being played on the seven. Um, you talk about Ralph uh, uh, being a percussionist, and he has touched you know multiple pop songs that uh, we we don't know he has that interpret you know has had that impact on music. Uh, adding that Trini yeah. flavor, I mean, just the two of us, you hear the little steel pan, you can hear it, and a lot of uh, the tracks on Grover Washington's. It's our albums, you will hear it. Tell me, how do you intend to capture the essence of this uh, in the tribute of Ralph McDonald? Well, so we, we have a fantastic young percussionist with us, Sheena Richardson, Ajibola. And if anyone has been paying attention locally, uh, Sheena's been doing great things. So that aspect is, is pretty well covered. In terms of the team, it's a lot of really, really excellent young musicians. So it means that as much as these are classic songs, we're able to to use, I guess, some of our youth. I'm, I'm probably like the oldest one in the ensemble. Um, use our youth to, to, to connect it with a, a modern spin. So um, I don't want to give too much away, but like I'm really excited about the arrangements. I'm really excited about working with with these guys and girls. Um, and I know that when people come, they're gonna recognize the tunes and they're gonna know that they're Ralph tunes or Kitchener tunes. Um, but hopefully, there'll be like a nice sort of realization. Oh, this is this is a little bit different, but always enjoyable and something that they can really get into. Now, to, to Tony. Your interpretation of Kitchener's songs, his music, and this tribute. Uh, what would you say strikes you the most? And as a teacher of the science and art of music, uh, what is most important uh, about Kitchener? You think the gen this generation of musicians need to know? Well, I think apart from the really uh, rich melodies that Kitchener has in his music, when you look at the original progressions, a lot of them are based on what one would look at in a standard jazz form, in terms of like a regular standard, like Autumn Leaves or um, There'll Never Be Another You. Like Kitchener's progressions are actually quite interesting and tend to be a little more um, intricate than, uh, well, I guess Calypso's of, of today because it's not, I'll go a little technical. So generally, a lot of calypsos tend to be diatonically in one key. So if it's in C major, it's all do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. That's it. Whereas Kitchener's music and some of the early calypsonians actually played with temporary keys within the song. So I can't just play in C major with a regular Kitchener tune. Um, I actually have to be very aware of what's happening with his progression because he opens it up with a lot of different colors. So I think that's one of the most striking thing about Kitchener's music, his progressions, as well as the melodies. But for an improviser, I'm really looking at the progression to, to improvise. So Kitchener 
because of his time in, in London and the fact that a lot of the musicians that recorded his early music were actually session musicians and jazz musicians based in London um, with Caribbean roots sometimes, um, his music sounds a certain way and the progressions are really, really lovely to work with. And you can hear, you know, any of our local greats, they would have played, like Raph Robertson did it, um, Andy Narrell has played Kitchener tunes, like any and everybody has touched on Kitchener's tunes. So that's one of the really, really important things to, to take away from his music. Now, Kitchener has left us. Uh, he is the standard when it comes to Calypso, obviously. And um, when it comes to the interpretation and borrowing from his tunes, what would you say is the most difficult or most challenging that has been uh, uh, for modern day artists trying to uh, take that? What is, what is your favorite tune, by the way? <laughs> Well, I, I love I love Margie um, because, like, lyrically it's 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 interesting in terms of we have we have a, a, a tradition of like calypso ballads, um, and Margie is one of those that like the lyrics are are, are very playful, and then when you 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 actually listen to the melody of the song. Maji, da, 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 is really really gorgeous like melodies so um i think the, the the difficult thing sometimes is to to take something that people know so well and re-envision it in a way that people are not going to be like why did he do that um so that is the the most difficult thing but um there's really a lot to work with where Kitchener's melodies and even even the progressions it's a lot to work with so I think that 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 is what I'm I'm really looking forward to I want to go to Nigel now tell me a bit about uh, what has been your experience in the Caribbean you have you have you have this vast knowledge of Caribbean artists and um, uh, who usually uh, Caribbean jazz artists what has been some of um, the things, the, the challenges that Caribbean artists have been facing or um, with the pandemic and even trying to come back to, to performing. Okay, we seem to be having some technical difficulties with, um, with Nigel there. I think I could probably jump in there um, because I have friends who, who are also musicians. Um, I, I think the Everybody's concerned about, obviously, the pandemic. And even though we are opening up, it's not like if the pandemic has suddenly stopped. So it's kind of difficult to, to get the audiences out sometimes. But I think having gone through a period of not having the opportunity to play and to perform, a lot of us are really just excited to be on stage working with other musicians in real life as opposed to all of the virtual things that would have happened over the course of the pandemic um, because one of the really important things to musicians is that sort of symbiotic relationship that we have with the audience where we give the audience music and they give us feedback to let us know that we're doing well and that energy is not captured with a, a virtual performance. It's like performing to a cold room, which is possibly one of the most difficult things for, for a musician because the kind of energy that it takes to perform, it's something that you have to dig into yourself and then it makes it, it's a lot easier when you have an audience that's appreciative and an audience that's enjoying themselves. So I think one of the things that is most important for us is to get back out into these spaces, to have people come out, to have people enjoy themselves, and for our industry to get that restart that it needs. Um, as Nigel said earlier, I think ingrained in our DNA, particularly in the Caribbean, is carnival. So I don't think there should be too many issues where that's concerned, but some of the 
the less quote unquote mainstream uh, genres, I think people need to to, to support it and, and think about what it means for artists trying to make it in the Caribbean, in Trinidad, doing something that is not as supported locally by businesses and, and otherwise. So, you know, I think that's 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 the main thing. Us words on the phone, uh, Nigel. Um, if you're able to hear me, uh, you were raising some very interesting points uh, with regard to Lord Kitchener and his music and the impact it would have had in Caribbean jazz. If you can just revisit some of those points that you were sharing with us, just to, to clearly articulate what you were uh, what you were saying there, I think it's really important that the people grasp uh, our connection with jazz and calypso. Hello? Okay, uh, we seem to have lost uh, N Nigel there once again. Uh, Tony, tell me a bit about uh, the, the well, music. I could probably answer that question too because actually one of my, <laughs> my day job is actually as a senior instructor at, at UTT and I actually teach jazz history and there is a very, very big connection with jazz and a lot of people aren't aware of it. Um, as Nigel said, the first Calypso recording by Lovey String Band was in 1912. The first jazz recording was 1917, five years later. So it means that Lovey String Band it was instrumental and there were some improvised moments. So I wouldn't say that it was as clearly laid out in terms of the way that jazz has developed as an improvisatory art form but jazz does not hold the title as being the only improvised music because musicians improvise that's what they do um, notated music is a western classical um, convention and musicians all over the world whether it's from Asia Africa all play and when you play you improvise so it means that when Lovey String Band went over to the U.S. to record. The musicians were playing and improvising. I'm not saying that there was they created jazz, but if you know anything about Caribbean people, we're involved in everything, once we're anywhere. So it means that there were Caribbean musicians around. Um, the influences from the Caribbean were part and parcel of the development of jazz. Um, so it means that as much as and, and it goes both ways because once something happens in the U.S., there's that influence on the Caribbean and then the Caribbean influences what's happening in the U.S., um, particularly with black musicians and African-American musicians. So there's a very, very strong connection. I think intentionally the development of Kaiso or Calypso jazz happened later on with people like Clive Zander and... You know, it it's something that we 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 almost take for granted and and want to separate calypso from 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 jazz, but like I said, if you think of of the the standard form in terms of the band setup for a calypso tent band, you have most times saxophone players, trombone players, trumpet players, rhythm section. It's the same, same setup for a jazz band, and so so there there are lots of 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 of, of dualities in terms of one borrowing from the next and, and and looking at it that way. So I I think in terms of calypso and calypso jazz and jazz, there are a lot of similarities and a lot of things that we take for granted. Oh, May seventh. God willing, we are all there. Uh, give, give us an idea and those patrons looking for this event. Uh, many of us are looking forward to getting back to some semblance of normalcy. Give me an idea what patrons can expect come May 7th. Well, you can expect a high energy performance. Um, obviously, I like to dress, so I'm going to be looking good. Uh, so I suggest anybody coming to the show take that into consideration and also take it as an opportunity to to dress up and, and come out looking their best because I think 
it's it's almost like established now that going out you go out so if you're going out you dress up nice you go out have a great time um there are refreshments on sale so it is an opportunity to mingle and actually chat with people you may not have seen for a very very long time because i know jazz artists and the greens they have there's a following of people that that go out and it's once a year they get to see each other they hang out uh so i think it's 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 that sort of community that it'll be a nice opportunity for us to to get together and yeah i think it'll be a, a fun fun event and i'm definitely putting a lot of energy towards it in terms of the preparation so it'll be a good one in particular themes that you have in mind um themes, borrowing from kitchener well, I, flapper era well i i well no i i think connecting connecting the traditional with 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 contemporary is one of the main ideas that i'm playing with so again i don't want to give things away but when i say kin that kitchener's music is still relevant today you know we had we had a soca this year that he borrowed heavily from from one of kitchener's songs and not even one of his his more popular hits so the, the fact is his music still reaches us today um, so that's the kind of thing that I'm I'm trying to to get into. Um, Kitchener, Ralph, I mean, even 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 Ralph McDonald, one of his tunes, like in in our present time, it's not it's not to say that the song was covered, but the progression was used basically in a really really popular tune, pop tune. So, and it's been like that for, for ages. There are lots of, of borrowings that happen. So there will definitely be that connection from, from classic music and the traditional with what's modern and trying to have a nice fusion and a blend so that people can sit back and appreciate what we've contributed. And when I say we, I mean we as a people, we in terms of Ralph and his Trinidadian roots, Kitchener, the Grandmaster, as well as, you know, just Trinidadian and Caribbean people, Trinbagonian people in general. So that, that I think is, is one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking of. Thank you very much, Tony. I'm sorry Nigel couldn't uh, continue to be with us. Gentlemen, Nigel, I am hopeful to see you in person May 7th, God willing, and thanks for Thank taking so the time Thank you so much, Kimberly. Have a good Thank one. Thank you so Take much. Care. You too. All right, bye. Well, that's how we end today's show. Thanks for being with me and thanks to our guests for taking their time to share this Tuesday with me, Kimberly Ram Kalawan. Uh, Mr. Rishi Haranan returns to early board mornings tomorrow and uh, it was my pleasure holding the fort until then. Andrew Chan is up next with the 8 a.m. newscast. Have a good one, folks.